Welcome to The Real Dish Show, the place where we peel back the onion on your fabulously fit life. I'm Chef Maria, the fit foodie. And with over 30 years of experience in the health and wellness world, I'm here to guide you on this journey to uncover the keys to living a vibrant, balanced life. Whether you're seeking practical tips for nutrition, fitness, mental well-being, or simply craving insightful conversations with experts in the field, you've come to the right place. Now get ready to embark on a holistic adventure toward a healthier, happier you and make shift happen for good. To The Real Dish, your go-to podcast for tips, stories, and strategies to live a healthier, happier life. You got to chef that good life, my friends. I'm your host, Chef Maria, and today we're diving into a powerful topic that can truly transform your approach to health and wellness, and that is the importance of mindset in changing to a healthier lifestyle. I'm calling it the caramel sauce to health because it's what tops it all off and makes the good habits sticky. <laughs> Uh, of course, I've got to have a food analogy in here. But seriously, everybody wants to, I mean, why wouldn't we want to adopt healthier habits, right? I mean, we know that if we eat better and we if we manage stress and if we exercise, that our quality of life will improve and we might live longer and we might avoid disease and we might manage you know, stress much more effectively. And don't we all want to like, you know, age the best that we can? I sure do. But why is it so hard to make it stick? You know, you, you might start off with a great New Year's resolution. And by the end of January, it's like, you're back to your old habits again, or you know, you, you want to stick with that diet, but the minute somebody opens up a bag of chips, it's like, forget it. All, all game out the window. So whether it's eating better, exercising regularly, managing the stress, that challenge often lies not in the actions themselves, but in our mindset and how we approach it. So today we're going to explore why mindset is so critical and how you can cultivate a mindset that supports lasting positive change. And I'll just use myself for an example. Um, you know, at the time of this recording, I am about three weeks out from my next bikini competition. Um, I'm a NPC Masters bikini athlete and talk about discipline, you know, for the past four months, you know, 16 weeks, really more like 24 weeks. Um, I have had to avoid a lot of food. Um, I've had to be really disciplined in my workouts. I've had to show up when I didn't feel like showing up. I've had to say no to food when I didn't want to say no, you know, um, and it's not easy. I mean, I, I would be a liar if I said it was a piece of cake. It's not at all. It's very challenging because depriving the flesh and disappointing others is not something that we do very well, at least for most of us. So it's really required a mindset. And I know for me, a lot of that has just been remembering what my why is, holding on to my goals. I talk about it in the introduction of my book, Eat Like You Give a Fork, The Real Dish on Eating to Thrive. And I talk about why making these changes really hinges on understanding your why, because your why is what you'll always go back to. It's your true, true north it's the thing that will keep you on track. It'll keep you accountable. And, you know, my accountability is I want to get up on that stage and do well. I am a competitive person. Um, and I don't want to just kind of go through the motions and, and get up there and just kind of wing it, you know? Um, I want to be, I want to do the best that I can. I mean, it's a lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of money. And, you know, those are all valuable resources that I can never get back. So for me, it's really important to do that. And the even clearer, bigger picture why is when I tore my ACL and was going through and my meniscus, don't forget the meniscus and fractured my patella um, during the, the, you know, pandemic, um, I was simultaneously going through perimenopause. And I don't think I've ever felt worse in my life. You know, it was, it was a painful 
quite literally painful experience, but also really hard on my psyche, really hard to like all of a sudden, seemingly overnight, gain weight around my midsection and just feel fluffy for the first time ever. I mean, I've always been fairly, you know, in fairly good shape, but it just something caught up with me and I realized I needed a change in order to support the lifestyle that I was used to, I was going to need to make shift happen. And so changing my mindset and, you know, cultivating a, a new set of mindset tools was really what got me over that big, big hump of my life. And I continue to hone and refine that. If you're looking for delicious, guilt-free desserts you can make in five minutes or less, look no further than Simply Delish. They're low-calorie, keto-friendly, gluten-free, plant-based, and zero-sugar treats are a dream for anyone with a sweet tooth that doesn't want to sacrifice taste and quality or their diet. From puddings to gels, frostings to protein, these are my go-to when I want to indulge and not wake up with a sugar hangover. These desserts come together in no time and are great for endless uses at less than 50 calories a serving. Yup. I add the pudding to my pancakes and smoothies and make simple syrups and collagen gel shots from the gel desserts and the list goes on. Well, the frostings, I mean, I could eat those on a rice cake and that's the best treat ever. Simply Delish gives new meaning to the word spoon me. Try a variety pack and save 15% with my code CHEFMAREA15. That's C-H-E-F-M-A-R-E-Y-A and the number 1515 at simplydelish.net. And in case you were wondering, my favorite pudding flavor is salted caramel. Let's just first talk about understanding mindset. And there's a a renowned psychologist, her name is Carol Dweck, and she introduced the concept of fixed and growth mindsets. So a fixed mindset is the belief that our abilities and intelligence are static and that they can't change much. And people with a fixed mindset will often avoid challenges and give up easily. On the other hand, a growth mindset is the belief that our abilities and intelligence can be developed through dedication and hard work. And people with a growth mindset embrace challenges and see failure as an opportunity to learn. Now, immediately, I want to ask you, do you come from a fixed mindset where it it pretty much it is what it is? Or are you all about growing? Do you enjoy learning new things? Do you enjoy studying and, and hearing other experts' opinions and trying things out on yourself. I mean, my my brother, I think he gave me the nicest, you know, side-handed comment or compliment. Um, and he said, you just love pushing boulders uphill, don't you? Uh, and yeah, I, I kind of do. I mean, I'm a goat. I was born in January, so I'm under the sign of Capricorn, if you believe in all that stuff. I don't really, but it's kind of funny to think. I am quite like a goat, like to climb higher and higher. But I like a good challenge because I believe that when we take on challenge, we can change for good. And you can't spell challenge without change, right? You really like literally can't spell challenge without change. So everything that I've been challenged by has given me an opportunity to grow. Now, I don't ask for trials and tribulations and challenges that I can't handle. But you know, if I, it's just like anybody that wants to go run a marathon, like running a marathon is not easy, but when you do it, you feel such a sense of accomplishment, right? When I get on that stage, I know I'm going to feel an incredible sense of accomplishment. Whatever you prepare for that you work hard towards, it is a sense of accomplishment. And that makes you feel like you have done something good in your life. So when it comes to adopting healthy habits for your lifestyle, you can only do it with a growth mindset. It just, you can't do it with a fixed mindset because you are not going to easily embrace anything that gets you out of your comfort zone. And you can't change your body. You can't change your sleep habits. You can't cut sugar and alcohol and the things that it takes to live a healthy mindset without having 
that growth mindset at the forefront. So another aspect of that is seeing your setbacks as part of the process rather than as failures. I can't tell you how many setbacks I've had in life. I mean, too many to count, personal, relational, uh, even spiritual. And every time I have a setback, I'm just going to say God's helped me take three steps forward. And I do that because I humble myself and come at it as, you know, I am a student. Let me learn from this versus like, I have fallen off the wagon. I'm hopeless and start self-deprecating and lose myself in that battle. And that's just not a good place to be. So mindset is everything. It is the caramel sauce to your health, uh, but it's the good caramel sauce with no calories or, or fat or sugar. Um, so let's, let's really talk about a few reasons why that is. So number one is resilience. You know, a growth mindset fosters resilience. And when you encounter obstacles, I should say, not when you encounter them, like you are going to encounter them. And it happens to us on a daily basis. You get a phone call that interrupts your workout or you are working on something and you have to take care of some, an emergency right away that has to do with your family. Like you have to stop everything and reorder your priorities and obstacles big and small are going to come your way. It's just going to happen. So let's just accept that. Um, but when you are resilient, you find creative solutions rather than getting anxious and irritated and, and upset or worse, giving up. Um, and that's just your bounce back. You know, I just call it the bounce back. Can you bounce back? Can you be resilient? You get knocked to the ground. Can you get back up again? You know, um, the mark of a, of a fighter, if you like boxing, this is a boxing analogy. If you get hit and you're down on the ground, you better get back up again or the countdown starts to take you out. So get back up. You got to just get back up and get back on with your goals and keep your why locked in because that resilience is often going to bounce back because of the power of your why. It's got to be strong enough to keep you going. Number two is motivation. You know, with a growth mindset, you're motivated by your progress, not perfection, because there is no such thing as perfect. We are all broken people. We're not perfect. No one is. Anybody who says they are, are just delusional. Um, but you gotta, you gotta stay motivated by your progress and you've gotta celebrate the small wins. I can't tell you how important it is to celebrate the small wins. You lose a pound. My goodness. Jump around, tell everybody I lost a pound. No, don't tell everybody, but you know, you got to celebrate that. Um, you just achieved, you know, a milestone where you've increased your, your, your weight on the leg press. You know, you, you're running a mile instead of half a mile or you went from walking to running. All of these things are huge and celebrating them and really stopping to appreciate your body and your mind is going to keep you motivated and moving forward. We get so down on ourselves and we're like, you know, well, she's doing that or he's doing so much better. Or he's so much faster. Or she's so much fitter. It doesn't matter. It's not their journey you're on. It's your journey. And you celebrating the small wins is going to help others also get motivated by their progress. Number three is self-compassion. So kind of piggybacking on that. People with a growth mindset tend to be more compassionate towards themselves. And you've got to understand that we may slip back, you know, it's okay. Slip ups are part of the journey too. And they don't lead to, uh, you know, a, a failure. That doesn't mean that you're bad. I, I just get so upset when people say like, oh, I'm so bad. I ate that food. No, you're not. There is no, first of all, there's no bad food or good food or bad people or good people. There's just maybe a little derailing, okay? But every train can get back on the track. And so that bad day or that bad meal, however you want to label it, you know, maybe it's just not something in your plan. Don't let that completely take you off the tracks to your overall progress. I mean, I would be a liar if I told you I haven't had 
couple little cheap bites here and there. I'm not proud of it, but you know, the flesh is, is weak sometimes. Um, but I just get back right back on that train again with my diet, um, for this prep. And, you know, I mean, I'm not talking about anything egregious, by the way, like I haven't had pizza or burgers or French fries. I mean, like, okay, there's been, let's true confessions here. Um, I did have a few bites of granola. Okay. I wasn't supposed to have granola. Do you know if you're getting enough magnesium? Because four out of five Americans aren't, and most people have no idea how important it is, and I was one of them. It can show up as a mood issue, you can have sleeplessness or super achy muscles or even worse, which is what happened to me, and this is a true story. I started having really severe panic attacks and heart palpitations, and at one point I really thought I was having a heart attack. Then I found Magnesium Breakthrough through Bioptimizers, which is now indispensable in my life. And it's helped with my mood, it's helped with sleep problems, recovery from workouts, and de-stressing from a super busy multitasking lifestyle. And listen, if you're a coffee lover like I am, you really need to take Magnesium because it will leach the Magnesium literally out of your bones. So Magnesium Breakthrough has been a real game changer for me. And I'm going to tell you that not all magnesium is the same. Unlike other magnesium supplements that might be giving you, you know, one to two forms of magnesium, I learned that Magnesium Breakthrough contains all seven forms of magnesium designed to help calm your mind and help you fall asleep and stay asleep and wake up refreshed and hope to avoid the issues that I went through. I can never tell you how scary it was and something that I will never hopefully have to experience again. And for my ladies who are going through peri or meno, I know you're not sleeping. So you gotta take a look at this. You gotta see how magnesium can really help you. And for everybody out there, not only does magnesium break through this groundbreaking product from Bioptimizers, help you sleep better, it helps you stay calm and focused and allows you to get things done. And for me, that's so important because I'm a super busy person and I have a feeling you are too. For me, it's all about using best in class products and Bioptimizer supplements are best in class. And you know, I wouldn't recommend it if I didn't try it myself and feel confident enough to recommend it to you. But if for any reason it doesn't work for you, they're offering a full refund and no questions asked. So you don't have to say like, hey, it didn't work out for me. It's just like, hey, I don't want it anymore. Just give me my money back. They are so confident that they offer a 365 day money back guarantee. I've never seen actually anybody offer a 365 day money back guarantee on anything. I haven't. So really you have no risk. Just visit bioptimizers.com. That's B-I-O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E-R-S.com forward slash Marea, M-A-R-E-Y-A. And you'll get 10% off all the Bioptimizers products, which they have a lot more than magnesium. I take their probiotic too, which is incredible. And there are lots of other products. You're gonna have to just check it out and see what you think. But you'll get 10% off. Just use my code Marea, that's M-A-R-E-Y-A, or visit bioptimizers.com forward slash Marea. And let me know how it works out for you. I'm super curious. And I have had, um, you know, maybe instead of like eating my meal, I'll have like a protein shake. I'm not supposed to do that. So I'm not talking about a huge slip up. I haven't like gone out and gone crazy, but just going off my strict, strict, strict plan. And it's strict. Um, but the point is I just get right back on. And that's really like, that feels good when I stay focused. It's, it feels good because I know I'm not cheating myself. And ultimately that's all we're doing when we don't stay focused is we're just cheating ourselves of the full impact of being able to look back and go, look at how far I've come. And that leads me to the next point, which is long-term focus. Number four is long-term focus. So adopting a healthy lifestyle is not a weight loss thing where you just 
do everything that you can to see the, the, you know, pounds come off the scale. This is about a marathon and not a sprint. And that growth mindset helps you stay focused on long-term goals rather than seeking just a quick fix. I'm going to say it, and I know I'm going to get some shade from this, but I'm going to say it. Everybody that's on the semaglutide kick just because they want a quick fix, that is not a quick fix. That is a long-term strategy where you're going to need to take an injection every single week. And by the way, that's an off label, uh, byproduct of those semaglutides like Ozempic. Um, they're not meant for weight loss. They're meant for diabetes, type two diabetes control. Um, and, and really we're, we're trying to seek a quick fix when it's not about that. You can't buy good health. You just can't, you can't buy a body that functions optimally. You can buy a butt right? You can, you can buy butt implants. You can buy breast implants. You can buy fillers and Botox and you can buy all the thing. I'm getting real here. I'm getting in your business. You can buy all the things, but, and that's a big, but that does not lead to health. That is all about a quick fix or an aesthetic fix or a trying to patch up something inside of you that needs really some more attention. You're going to do that with a healthy lifestyle. You're going to do that by eating properly. You're going to do that by exercising. You might need to take something for a season, but it's not meant to be something that you take forever unless you have a pre-existing condition. And I'm not talking to the people that have pre-existing conditions, but I will say that I have seen people come off of medication, 15, 16, 21 different medications adopting a healthy lifestyle. I saw it with the Daniel plan when I was working with my group time and time again. I saw it. I saw it with the literally tens of thousands of people in our congregation that were able to get off of 21 different medications. I know a guy that did. Um, he was on diabetes medication and blood pressure and heart issues, all kinds of stuff. And he did that by getting his diet together exercising regularly, regularly changing his mindset and all the things that I'm talking about. So think about it this way. If you believe you can improve and learn, you will be more likely to put in the effort required to make lasting changes. So if you come into this with a fixed mindset, like, uh, it's not going to work. I've tried everything. I've done it all. I've tried everything. You can't tell me anything new. I already know it all. Ain't going to happen. But if you come in with a growth mindset and you're like, you know what? I'm open. I believe I can. I know that I have it within me to make this shift happen. And I can get healthier than ever. I believe you can. And that mindset, you know, just believing is... I must say 70% of this journey. You know, athletes know this. You do all the work to have the vision. You know, you visualize yourself winning. You visualize your gymnastics routine in your head. You know, you see yourself on the starting line and how it's going to feel when you come off the block. Like, I know about visualization. I visualize myself posing. I can feel it in my body, even when I'm not doing it. And when I visualize it, I already see myself doing it. So it's, it's a really powerful strategy to take. Now, let's talk about cultivating. We talked about why it's so important. Now let's talk about how do we get this growth mindset? Now that we understand the importance of it, I want to help you cultivate it with some practical strategies. So number one is embrace challenges. We need to see challenges as that opportunity for change. And opportunity is the word that I want to underline here, rather than seeing it as a threat. If you find an exercise difficult, I remember when I first started doing, um, you know, weighted squats, um, I was, it was torture. 
number one, my knee would not move, you know, uh, I had a lot of problems with my torn ACL. Number two, I just, it hurt, you know, whether you're doing it on a Smith machine or you're doing it, um, just with, with free weights or, you know, a kettlebell or you're on a hack squat, like squats hurt. You're engaging a lot of different muscle groups in a compound movement. But now I freaking love that machine. It is one of my favorites because I feel so powerful when I use it. And so, but that didn't happen overnight, by the way. You know, I started putting on little weight, little weight, little weight. In the beginning, it was just the bar or it was just like really light weights. But now I just, I get so much like vigor, you know, I like come out of a set just like, woo, you know, it's so exciting to see myself get stronger. So embrace that. Where you're starting is not where you're going to end up in this marathon. Um, and you definitely want to log that, you know, I, I'm such a big believer in logging your, your daily progress and taking pictures because you can't see how far you've come if you never look back, you know, so get a journal, use your phone, take photos, track your progress, and you will look back and go, wow, I really have come a long way. And that challenge is something that you can really call your testimony. Number two is learning from criticism. Constructive feedback is something as adults, we all need to come to terms with. We need to be comfortable with criticism because construct, and I'm going to underscore here, constructive feedback, not just criticism, but constructive feedback is a tool for growth. You can take it personally, or you can use it to learn and enhance how you approach things. And the people that love you, the people that coach you, that have your best interest at heart, are going to give you constructive feedback. I'm not talking about hypercritical people that just want to tear you down. That, that you just That's nothing that you need in your life. But the people that you trust, the people that you know have your best interest at heart that are going to give you that constructive feedback that's going to help you build are the ones that you want to seek out. And if you don't currently have an accountability partner, you should find one. Um, you should find somebody that you really trust that loves you, that wants to see you succeed. Not a cheerleader though, different. A cheerleader is just going to be like, rah, rah, everything you do is great. But if it's more like a coach. A coach is somebody that still wants your best interest at heart, but still wants to see you change. So that's where you're going to get the, the most feedback in a growth powered way. Number three is to celebrate the effort, not just results. Kind of going back to what we were talking about in you know, why mindset's so important. We need to be able to celebrate how the effort looks. And I'm going to give a shout out to my son here for a second, because my son's 18 at the time of this recording. We're often in the gym together. He's my gym buddy, even though we don't often work out together, but he'll see me and he'll high five me or fist bump me or, you know, help encourage me in a set. And He's always telling me, don't leave anything. It's not from a needle, a pill, or a prescription. My favorite biohack for managing pain, helping gut health, managing mood, energizing my body from head to toe, and the perfect glow up is red light and infrared therapy. I cannot tell you enough about how much I love it. And my go-to is Loombox. It's a portable red light and infrared therapy box. And it's so portable, you can take it with you. I travel with it everywhere. It is literally indispensable. And just 10 to 12 minutes a day is really all you need. I've seen a huge difference in my complexion. Uh, It helps with fine lines and with uh, skin clarity and has helped a lot of people that have skin issues. So if you have eczema or psoriasis, it's something that you want to take a look at. It's also tested by NASA. 
So there's a lot of data and science. It's not just one of these things where people are like, oh yeah, it works, or, you know, I don't know. It's actually proven with multiple hundreds of scientific papers. And what I love about Loombox is it's so much more powerful than other light therapy type boxes or solutions. And you are going to get the most mileage out of this because it's something that you can use for so many different things. Managing pain, I mean, when I was recovering from my torn ACL and now my latest accident with my dog running into me full speed, uh, all 75 pounds of him into my knees, um, it's something that I use all the time. I also use it to manage pain and inflammation after my workouts. And basically, it's my therapy every single day, especially during the long winter months where we don't get that much sunlight. You got to try it. That's all I'm going to say. I can't recommend it enough. And you can get up to $250 off of Loombox with my code, Chef Maria. You'll just go to the Loombox, that's the L U M E B O X dot com forward slash Chef Maria, or just go to the Loombox.com and use Chef Maria at checkout for your discount. I'm telling you, it is the investment that will pay back in dividends for your health. I love it. Don't leave anything like not on the mat or not on, you know, that, that machine, like leave it all on there. Um, because if you leave the gym today feeling like you didn't give it your all, you're not going to feel satisfied. And it's so true. It's like, don't just go through the motions, go through it and feel it. You know, if you made it to the gym today, by God, that's an awesome, awesome thing. Just the fact that you got there, you know, did you give it your all? Amazing. You should feel so accomplished. Did you get there, but you didn't give it your all? That's okay. Just think about it next time. Be encouraged that you have the strength inside of you. And that's where a gym buddy or an accountability partner can be so helpful is like, we all know we have a, probably a little extra in the tank. And when somebody else, like when I work out with my coach, I work out harder than ever. Like she just doesn't let me leave anything in the tank. Um, so, you know, you got to celebrate the effort regardless. Um, and, and tracking that, you know, going back to the first point, tracking that is really going to help you see the effort that you've been making. Number four is to practice self-reflection. Um, and that is, it, so I'm tying in a few things here, but reflect on that process by journaling. I just really believe in that, really believe in keeping notes on what you've done. Um, you know, write down your sets. I've got it in my phone because my phone's always with me and I love writing in journals, but I have a tendency to not remember to bring journals with me all the time, but I do have my phone with me all the time. And I have a note section and I write down notes in there. Um, so reflect on that. Take the pictures. I'm telling you, it's not for vanity. It's just to see how far you've come. Even like taking little videos of yourself, you can check your form. You can, you know, just kind of check yourself um, and, and use those in the future to kind of look back and just see how far you've come. The next one is surround yourself with growth oriented people. And I'm going to say it, community matters. Spend time with people who encourage your growth and share similar goals. That positive influence is going to bolster your own mindset. Like when you see people crushing, I will go up to people at the gym sometimes. And I, sorry if this is weird, but I will go up to them and be like, you are so motivating or you look amazing or you're totally motivating me. And sometimes they're, you know, half my age or younger, but I can see sometimes in their eyes, they're kind of like, what? But then they're kind of like, cool. Yeah. I, I did it yesterday with this gal. Um, I wanted to use one of the machines and she saw me. She's like, you want to work in with me? And she was 23. Um, her name's Sophia, like my daughter born in the same month. I was like, Oh my gosh, this is so cool. And she even had curly hair like her. 
And uh, we worked in together and we kept just motivating each other. She would put weights on for me and I'd be like, come on, let's do more. And she'd be like, okay. And then when we were done, she's like, I really hope I see you at the gym next time. And it was just like, you know, I'm 55. She's 23, but who cares? We're all in this together. We all have goals. And her motivating me and me motivating her, it was just like a beautiful thing. So your community can be people that you know, or it can even just be people with like-minded vision that you see in the gym or out on the trail if you're hiking or running or, you know, in a Pilates class or, you know, I don't know, maybe you have a, a spiritual group. I, I belong to a, a women's Bible study group and they're my people, you know, I just, that community really, really matters. And having that positive mindset that just sees the glass half full has, has been so impactful in my life. And then the last one is to set some goals. Okay. Let's set some process goals instead of just saying, this is what it looks like. Instead of just setting outcome goals, like I want to lose 10 pounds. You set process goals. These are, I'm going to call them the, um, the mini habits that lead to the outcome. So instead of saying lose 10 pounds, let's just say, I am going to work out for 30 minutes, five times a week. So instead of focusing on something that you can't necessarily control directly, you're going to focus on what you can control. You can control if you show up to the gym five times a week and work out for 30 minutes. The losing 10 pounds part might have a more latent, you know, impact or it might not happen. It might, what you might find is you work out for 30 minutes, five times a week and you lose five pounds, but you gain five pounds of muscle. And so, you know, when we're married to an outcome, that's not necessarily indicative of health. It's more of, I'm going to just say like what society tells us we should be doing or what a certain ideal um, that maybe the media has painted or, or someone's painted for you might look like. But if you work out for 30 minutes, five times a week, and you're feeling stronger, or you say, I am going to strength train three times a week, and I'm going to do that for 45 minutes, and I'm going to focus on different body parts each time, like that's something you can control. And by virtue of doing that, I guarantee you it's going to make you stronger. Um, and, and we should be focused on what we can control versus what we can't necessarily control because that's going to just make us feel more powerful. So when you integrate these strategies into your daily life, you can start to gradually shift your mindset towards that growth attitude, you know, and doing that will make it a lot easier to adopt and maintain these healthy habits. Um, I, I'm going to just share a few real life examples from people that I've coached um, or have been part of my coaching programs. Um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about Sarah. Sarah was, you know, always intimidated by the idea of going into the gym. She um, was overweight. She had about 50 pounds or so that um, we were trying to work with. Again, it wasn't just about like losing 50 pounds. It was just like, let's get strong and let's do that by getting active. Um, and so, you know, what we had a battle was like this intimidation of going into the gym. Um, she was, you know, she was like, I don't want to put on those pants and I don't want to, like, I feel like people are going to be looking at me. But what we tried to focus on was really like making each gym session productive and, and really making the focus about her. Um, and every gym session was a chance to get better. And when we celebrated the small victories, like increasing her treadmill time by a few minutes or, you know, just making it consistent that she would show up and schedule it on her calendar and go, you know, um, five times a week, her confidence soared. And by virtue of doing that, it all just kind of, she went through the process and it all worked out the way it was supposed to. And then the gym became her best friend. It was like her comfort spot. She loves going to the gym now. Okay. 
Okay, when it comes to cooking and doing it in a way that is healthy for your fit life, there's a few things that we have to keep in mind. Number one, is it functional? Number two, is it clean? Meaning, does it contain any of those yucky coatings that they add to cookware nowadays, especially the nonstick kind? We don't need that, we don't want that. And number three, is it pretty? Because hey, if it's aesthetic, it's gonna make us feel pretty good when we cook on it. And that's why I am totally digging hex clad cookware. Talk about the most gorgeous cookware you will ever use. Plus, it's totally functional and healthy to use. Hexclad's patented hybrid cookware brings performance of the stainless steel, the durability of cast iron, and the convenience of nonstick all in one. That, my friends, is Michelin level standards with cleanup convenience because when we're cooking at home, we don't wanna be scrubbing dishes all day long either. So now you can unleash your potential in the kitchen without any limits. What I love about it, that nonstick hybrid technology coupled with excellent temperature control, you've gotta be able to temper your temperature to get that great sear and to do the nice poaches. Easy care, so it's gonna clean up easy and easy cleaning. All of that with the additional benefit of being free from toxic coatings and having a lifetime warranty. This is the cookware you're gonna use for life, my friends, so it's time to take a little assessment of the cookware that you have. If you have your hand-me-down Teflon cookware, it's time to throw it out and invest in a nice new set and Hexclad is gonna deliver on its promise with that lifetime warranty. I can't recommend it enough. I'm totally infatuated with mine. Can I say that, infatuated? And I know you're gonna be too. So make sure you head over to hexclad.com forward slash Chef Maria and you'll get up to 30% off your new cookware. Start the year off right and cook with delight. How about that for a rhyme? No, seriously though. Use my code Chef Maria at hexclad.com. That's H E X C L A D.com, and you'll get up to 30% off your purchase. You will not be disappointed. And so it's really a cool thing when you can just kind of get over your own fear. Um, a lot of the times it's our own fear and insecurity of what others might think. But at the end of the day, this is your journey. And who cares what other people think? They're too busy looking at themselves in the mirror. Let's be honest. They, they don't care. Um, the next one was John. John, <laughs> John was married to another person who really needed to lose weight. Um, she was over a hundred pounds overweight. John was real thin. And John struggled with this because he was like, I want to just eat what I want to eat. Like, this is not my problem. Um, but it was because if you're married to somebody who really has a goal and so desires it, like, I believe it's incumbent as a partner to support them. And it, it doesn't necessarily mean like you never eat pizza, but like certainly let's try and do everything that we can to support that person. So what was really cool was by adopting this kind of like mindset of like, he took on the role of a coach too and started supporting her and started experimenting with new recipes and learning about nutrition. And, you know, they'd go out to eat and he would preview the menu to make sure there were things on the menu that she could have. Um, and it was so cute. Like he was doing research on where they could go. And when they would travel, he would seek out these restaurants. And now he is the one that upholds the cooking in the household. He's gotten healthier, even though he was thin and never really had like a weight problem. He wasn't necessarily like the healthiest person. Now he's working out with her. They eat better and it's brought their relationship so much closer and uh, that is, I think, one of my favorite stories. It's so beautiful to see that happen. Another gal by the name of Emily, she was like a stress case. I'm just going to say it. Stress case, overloaded schedule, 
always feeling overwhelmed and always feeling like there was not enough time in the day. I'm sure struggled with chronic, you know, cortisol stress, um, didn't sleep well. And what we started doing was really incorporating a mindfulness and meditation and prayer practice, um, you know, and for, you know, I'm using the word prayer, but it, it doesn't, it, it ha- it's just, it's what brings your heart and your mind peace. And for me, that is a big part of my morning is my prayer and mindfulness um, practice. And that's, that's looks like meditation. It looks like sitting with um, a candle and my meditation and reading a devotional. And that really works for me. For, for Emily, it was really about just a, a mindfulness practice, like talking herself through what the day was going to look like and setting the right tone for it. Instead of just like grabbing her phone the first thing out of bed, um, getting all stressed out about emails, thinking about her calendar and everything, she just started the day in quiet time um, with a cup of tea and just, you know, was able to kind of really make this part of her daily routine. And it, it changed her life. She became so much more resilient, better at handling life's pressures, because the truth is the pressure of life doesn't go away, but how you handle it can change. And, and that's really the secret sauce here. Um, and that goes back to the mindset caramel, right? We got to let that caramel ooze all over us. So let's just kind of re replay this and I'll go over this kind of quickly because I want to wrap up so you can start using your tips to foster a growth mindset in your health journey. We got to reframe the negative thoughts. Instead of saying, I can't do this, saying, I can't do it yet, or I'm not able to do it yet, but I'm on my way, yet opens up the possibility of future success. And the journey is long. So one foot in front of the other. And every time you make a, a you know progress, you're going to be able to celebrate that. Um, practice gratitude. Let's be grateful. Grateful for this breath in our lungs. Grateful that we can do these things, that we have the privilege to buy healthy food, that we can, you know, embrace freedom and peace. That should give you, wow, I just, it makes me want to tear up, honestly. That should just make you so fortunate, feeling so fortunate that you have the means and the ability to do that. And it doesn't take a wealthy person to be healthy. Wealth is not health. Health is feeling like you're wealthy because you feel vibrant. It is a difference. So practice that gratitude every single day. Visualize your success. You got to spend a few minutes each day visualizing yourself and your health goals. That visualization will help reinforce that positive mindset and keep you motivated because you can see your success at the end of this journey and through the journey, by the way, through the journey, you got to find support, find a mentor, find a coach, find an accountability partner who will not only encourage you, but provide constructive feedback. We don't need a yes woman or a yes man, or that's awesome, dear. Like we need somebody that's going to be in the weeds with us. That's going to be like, listen, you know, I, I noticed you're drinking a lot lately and I love you and I'm not trying to like shame you, but you know, you told me that part of your health goal is to accomplish this and you know, like drinking, you know, every other day is not going to help you get there. Like we can do this and support each other in a kind way. And then the last thing is to educate yourself. Let's continue learning about health and wellness together because the more you know, the more equipped you'll be to make informed decisions and overcome challenges. You can make shift happen with rituals that lock your habits into place. So remember, the journey to better health is ongoing, but adopting a growth mindset you will, by adopting a growth mindset, you will equip yourself with the tools to navigate and navigate this journey successfully. 
So as we wrap up today's episode, I hope you feel inspired to cultivate a growth mindset in your health journey. It really is the sauce, the sticky sauce. If you like caramel, stick with the caramel. If you like chocolate, go with that. Whatever you like, just visualize that mindset as being the sauce that's going to hold us all together. And that shift happens in your mind. And the cool thing is, and I learned this in my brain health coaching program with Dr. Daniel Amen at Amen University, the more healthy habits you adopt, the more your brain will want to embrace these mindset shifts. It is a continuous cycle. So go out there, crush your goals, my friend, and stay health, healthy, stay happy, and stay focused. You got this. Thanks for being with me today. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered legal health advice. We are not responsible for any losses, damages, or liabilities that may arise from the use of this podcast. This podcast is not intended to replace professional medical advice, and the views expressed in this podcast may not be those of the host or the management. Hey, it's Chef Maria, and thank you so much for tuning into The Real Dish. It means a lot to me that you're here. I hope today's episode has inspired you to take some proactive steps towards a healthier and happier you. Because just remember, bite-sized changes can lead to big transformations. But before you go, would you do me a big favor? If you found value in this episode, would you share it with two of your closest friends and hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode? And if you really want to make this girl's day, would you leave a five-star review? I do hear an angel gets its wings every time you do that. But really, this helps us spread the message of real-life wellness to even more listeners. And everybody could use a healthy portion of that, right? Now, until next time, remember, you are the chef of your own kitchen. So feed your life well, make good decisions, prioritize your well-being, and remember... You need to take care of you because we only get one of you and you are a gift to everyone around you. So until next week, this is Chef Maria signing off. And just remember, we're here to cook up a good time every single week. We'll see you soon.